Let's roll!
We're back! We found Kachina's ancient name, too! Well, it's fairly complicated. Let me give you the condensed version. The Fatui again? We can't go anywhere without them causing trouble. But what if the Fatui finds out you've lost your power? Won't they try to take advantage of the situation? <laughs> That's why it has to be our little secret. No one else can know or we're asking for trouble. Look, I wish I could offer you some sort of consolation, but I won't lie to you. With multiple factions closing in, there's nothing comforting about the situation we're facing. Still, all you need to do is focus on your goal. You can leave the complicated matters to me. I can also step in on the Pyro Archon's behalf. There's a limit to what I can accomplish, but I'll help you however I can. <laughs> There's no need to be so modest, Yansan. Your incredible strength has long been a well-known fact. You're the pride of your tribe. Archon, I... I'm sorry about before. You have so much on your plate, so much that you have to worry about. But all I could do was focus on my own feelings. You have nothing to be sorry about. We all get overwhelmed by our emotions, myself included. Your reaction to Kachina's disappearance, I... I understand that feeling very well. Well, now that we have Kachina's ancient name, let's go track her down. Follow me. What is this place? Hey, isn't that Atea's talisman? <laughs> Good eye. This is where I store all the various mementos I've collected. Wow. I've never seen this place before. There are so many things in here. It looks like there are items from every tribe. Collecting them must have taken a lot of effort. I suppose you could think of it as a hobby of sorts. In Natlan, everyone grows up listening to the stories of heroes. And physical items do a far better job of preserving those stories than our own memory. <sighs> now, I still have some preparations to make for the ceremony, so feel free to take a look around in the meantime. If you're curious about an item, I'm more than willing to tell you about its origins. Alright, we'll have a look! This flower looks like it's thriving. You must be good at taking care of plants, Archon. It looks familiar. Hey, there's a fishing rod here. It must have belonged to the people of the springs. That's right. It belongs to a legendary fisherman named Matavaru. I have his entire set of fishing equipment, actually. He and I met in a tavern. He told me about a particular kind of giant fish and his meticulous plan to catch it. In his eyes, I saw a hunger and a strong fighting spirit. To him, the sea was the battlefield upon which he staked his honor. So, did he do it? The next time I saw him, he was covered in scars. It turned out the fish he sought had been corroded by the abyss. He managed to kill the fish, but sustained a serious injury in the process, which meant he could never go deep-sea fishing again. Can a fisherman claim victory 
if he fails to bring back his catch. That's what he asked me in the end. Well, Paimon thinks he won. That was my answer as well. The experience was far more valuable than the prize itself. In the end, he didn't want his tools to go to waste, so he gave them to me. Wait, that means you also know how to fish. <laughs> Maybe we can go head to head sometime. Make sure to handle everything with care. This cup, for example, it's heavier than it looks. Whoa, that belt is bigger than Paimon's head! The Collective of Plenty are known for their bodybuilding competitions and contests of strength. This belt is a symbol of great honor within the tribe. The association with strength might also have been the reason the original belt was extremely heavy. It was difficult for even two people to lift. And even if a warrior had the strength to put it on, wearing it for any length of time would still leave them gasping for breath. Sounds like it. So the owner of the original belt, Katera, commissioned a craftsman to make a copy identical in appearance but far lighter in weight. That is the belt you see before you. He would often wear this version when training in order to protect his waist. Or he made a lighter version so he could wear it all the time and show it off. There are so many jars and potions around here. Do they have anything to do with alchemy? No, those belong to the masters of the Nightwind. Their ceremonial tools used to amplify the ability to communicate with the Night Kingdom and the Wyab. Yamaya is an expert in this field, and she taught me a lot. Even though she appears stoic and serious, she actually has a keen sense of humor. The tools you see here are quite traditional. Her students found them outdated, so she passed them on to me. The contents of the jars aren't all that special. Oh, uh, except the big jar in the middle. That's what she really wanted to give me. Ooh, must be something really cool! What's inside? Grape juice. Huh? <laughs> it's quite tasty, although probably expired by now. This is a Taya's talisman. I'm sure you're familiar with this one already. Atea was rarely ever without it. The talisman brought her a lot of luck in battle. Powder still needs some time to settle, so let's wait a little longer. Well, what do you think of my collection? Do you feel like you have a better understanding of Natland's culture now? Yeah! If each item represents a different story, seems like Natland's really been through a lot! Does every item hold a special memory, just like Atea's talisman? That's right. 
The items in my collection actually serve a similar purpose to the ancient names passed down among the tribes. They demonstrate the true shape of time. The shape of time? Most people perceive time as a linear concept, almost like a straight line that can only move forward. We cannot change the past or predict the future. But there's also a different theory, one that I believe to be closer to the truth. Namely, that the past, present, and future all exist at once. At once? Paimon's not sure she understands. Uh... <laughs> Let's say your journey ended right now. Thinking back on your experience in each nation, which one would you say was the most important? Exactly. Even at the end of your journey, the things you experienced along the way don't cease to exist. They become part of who you are. Take out a portion of that journey, and you would likely make very different decisions, and eventually arrive at a very different destination. The future is the same way. It exists even though it has yet to come to pass. We just lack the means to perceive it. Of course, there are those with the power to foresee the future. They simply call it by a different name. Fate. <laughs> You're quite familiar with that concept, I would imagine. Uh, that does kind of make sense. The future hasn't happened, but already exists. Humanity excels at living in the present, but too often we forget the past and neglect the future. While the pilgrimage and the Night Warden Wars lead us to a better future. Only by uniting the people of Natlan across countless eras can we fight back against an enemy as formidable as the Abyss. To come up with such a set of rules, the first Pyro Archon must have possessed a level of insight I can only imagine. That's correct. At first, he was a mortal man with no special power. After he ascended to the Divine Throne, he used it to borrow power from the heavens and establish the rules of Natlan. Namely, a framework through which ordinary people can ascend to Archonhood. By holding the pilgrimage, we're able to determine the strongest among us. And when that person ascends to the Divine Throne, their inner flame will awaken. In addition, the Sacred Flame will grant them significant knowledge and memory of this land. After all, that's how I came to know everything I just told you. So, it all comes down to the power of the Divine Throne and the rules. Wait, is that a family portrait? <laughs> yes. That's my mother, father, younger sister, and the little Saurians we raised. I turned a piece of my dad's leather armor into a canvas and commissioned a famous artist to paint our likeness. Your sister is so cute! It looks like the two of you are really close. Paimon was having a hard time thinking of an Archon as an ordinary person, but seeing this portrait, it kind of makes sense now. It really doesn't look like there was anything special about you before. Oh, wait, is Paimon allowed to say that? A little late for that question, don't you think? Sorry! Paimon's so sorry! Paimon's mouth works faster than her brain sometimes! <laughs> it's alright. I'd never get upset over something like that. No matter what others may say, my past is a precious part of my identity. I'm forever proud of the life I used to lead. Becoming the Archon doesn't mean you sever ties with your family. The position just comes with a lot of responsibilities, so it impacts how often you get to see them. My father made the most delicious stew, so my sister would often bring me a large pot of his cooking, and he would sit on a blanket and eat it together. One time, we didn't close the door securely, and the Saurians you were raising ran into the room and knocked over the entire pot. My sister immediately burst into tears. The two troublemakers were going for the meat, but when they saw my sister's distress, they froze on the spot. I still remember the way they laid there, sulking like a pair of children, even after making such a mess. 
It was frustrating, but in the end, all I could do was comfort my sister and move on. Wow. Isn't that what being a family is all about? <laughs> I think about that story a lot, actually. As the Archon, I made a vow to defend this nation, and experiences like that, they remind me exactly what I'm trying to protect. Well, what happened after that? This portrait looks pretty old. Your sister must be all grown up by now, right? I believe she ended up working as an architect and artist. She built many houses and crafted many beautiful works of art. Anyway, that's enough about me. Now that the powder is settled, we can begin. Iansan, Mulani, Chaska, over here please. Place the ancient name up there, and then we'll begin. Surely, as the echoes of life resound through heaven and earth, so too shall our stories remain eternal. Ancient name, take us to your fated bearer. Allow her to answer our call. Uh, am I hallucinating again? Gina, are you okay? Huh? I, I'm not seeing things, am I? Is... Is the Abyss playing tricks on me again? It's okay, Kachina. It's just us. We're trying to find a way to bring you back. Everyone, you have to listen to me. I've been investigating the Night Kingdom this entire time. And I figured out what's wrong. The Wyab is being affected by the Abyss. I was waiting for the Wyab to send me back, but then this really strong monster came in and almost killed me. The Wyab saved me, even though its power is weakening. So I've been hiding from the monsters while trying to find a way to help. The Night Kingdom has become a huge mess, though. I keep hearing these awful sounds and seeing really horrible things. Don't listen to those sounds, Kachina. The Abyss is trying to strip you of your sanity. All you need to do is stay safe and wait for us. We'll be there shortly. It's okay. I feel so much better now that I've had the chance to talk to you guys. You don't need to worry about me. I've never been strong or special at all, really. So I don't blame anyone for forgetting about me or leaving me behind. <laughs> Just knowing you care is more than enough. I'll find a way back. You don't have to put yourselves in danger to come rescue me. You're always like this, Kachina. Now's not the time to act tough. We're coming for you, and that's final. I don't know what lies the Abyss has been feeding you, but I'll tell you something right now. Nobody here sees you as a burden. You're a victor of the Night Warden Wars, a hero of Natlan. All you need to do is wait for us to rescue you, and you'll get all the applause and recognition you deserve. <laughs> Everything 
getting so dark and creepy here. And I want to go home. Still, I don't want you to put yourselves in danger because of me. I don't want to hold anyone back ever again. All you need to do is place your trust in us, just like you always have. No one fights alone. We're not leaving you behind. Not ever. Yeah, we're so close, we can't call it quits now. Looks like we've lost contact. Now comes the most dangerous part. You have to traverse the Night Kingdom in your physical form. This entrance to the Night Kingdom was left behind after an abyssal invasion. Even a brief amount of time inside could expose you to corrosion. I know. I'm prepared for that possibility. All right. Then I wish you all the best. I'll tell Koichi to be ready just in case she's very experienced in dealing with abyssal corruption. That face you just made. Don't tell me you two got into another argument. No, I just... feel bad for creating more work for her. I'll go with them too, Archon. The more people, the stronger the party. Thank you so much for your help, everyone. It really means a lot that you're willing to brave these dangers with me. And there's no time to lose, so let's get going. Now that I've lost my power, I won't be able to provide much practical support. But I can still keep an eye on the situation from here. Eonsan, I know it's unlikely, but if you encounter a situation you can't handle... That won't happen. I hope not. Attaboy! Get him! <laughs> Strike a pose! Let's roll! Be careful out there. I'll observe the situation from here.
Let's roll! So we're underneath Natland right now? It looks nothing like Paimon was imagining. That's because in the distant past, Natlin was home to an incredibly advanced civilization ruled by dragons. Humans only established their own society after the fall of the dragons. So these are Saurian ruins? Wait, you mean like the Elemental Sovereigns? They had their own advanced civilization? Yes, a really long time ago. Very few records have survived until now, so no one really knows what the devices here are for. These ruins have been abandoned for a long time, but with the recent increase in Abyss activity, the installations around here have somehow been activated again. So what you're saying is... We're not in for an easy trip to the Night Kingdom. <laughs> no. It's going to be obstacle after obstacle from here on out. <laughs> <laughs> Um, why are you all laughing like that? It's creeping Paimon out! It's the pre-adventure excitement kicking in, right guys? Of course. I'm eager to get started. Then let's go. We won't let anything stand in our way. Attaboy! <laughs> May I present? Let's roll! Attaboy! The show begins! <laughs> Let's roll! Me. Seems like the road ends here. How should we get across? As a professional trainer, I think you could stand to build up your endurance, Paimon. Professional trainer? Paimon thought you were a warrior from the collective of plenty. Well, that goes without saying. But I actually work as a sports coach. I provide professional guidance for many of Natland's popular sports. And I don't just mean physical training. I design nutrition plans as well. Ah, so basically no sugar, no soft drinks, no grilled meat. Yeah, yeah, we'll be here all day if you list them out one by one. 
It's much faster to just focus on what's good for you. Such as? Vegetable juice. Mmm. Want some? You know, ian san Might not see eye to eye. On any of my snacks, I've won them all fair and square. <laughs> Look familiar. We fought them before. Let's go. Show no mercy. Catch me! Let's roll! Ha! 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 
the entrance the Pyro Archon told us about. The one ripped open by the Abyss. Yes. There's something in the depths of this place that feels familiar, yet also foreign. We actually have to go in there? Okay, Paimon just needs to psych herself up. Don't push her through before she's ready! Looks like we made it. This is the Night Kingdom. Oh, it looks so different from what I imagined in the stories. That overflow of energy is probably what trapped Kachina here in the first place. From this point forward, everything we know about the real world no longer applies. Anything can happen here. Paimon's more worried about how we're gonna make it out. We obviously can't go back the way we came! Do you see that patch of light on the ground? It's shining down from that fissure in the sky. Oh yeah, right in front of us! So that's coming from up there? Oh, it's so high up! Did we really fall that far down? Just like I said, our real-world knowledge doesn't apply here. We fell all this way yet came out completely unscathed. If this was the real world, we'd have to climb our way back up to the entrance. But here, all we have to do is stand underneath the light and offer a prayer. Th that's it? You really think that little of Paimon? That's not even why Paimon asked! So that means all we need to do is find Kachina and bring her to this location. Exactly. This light is streaming in from the real world. It's a link between the two realms. Hmm... The terrain looks difficult to navigate, and the visibility is not great either. How are we supposed to find Kachina in these conditions? Yeah, these floating black things don't look super friendly either. Those are all manifestations of abyssal power. Be careful. Ghost! A talking ghost! Calm down, I'm here to help. You're the ones who helped feed Chama, right? Yes, I'm Vichama's friend, Malko. I was completely lost to this realm until I sensed a mysterious power calling out to me. It's like it was seeking me out, attempting to reassemble the pieces of who I used to be. Of course, it could only do so much. I'm sorry I can only appear before you in this imperfect form. No, we should be the ones apologizing. 
If the Spirit Speaker Stone hadn't become corrupted by the Abyss, we could have done much more. But we had to destroy it. Otherwise, Vichama and his tribe would have been in danger. Of course. Thank you for protecting him. I never imagined that, even after all these years, he'd still take such a risk for me. Under the power of the stone, it felt like our souls were connected. Turns out even our regrets were exactly the same. Whether in triumph or death, you want your best friend by your side. Exactly. That may not be in the cards for us, but it's not too late for you. You're looking for a young girl from the Children of Echoes, right? She's being chased by an embodiment of abyssal power. I'd like to help her while I'm still in this form, so follow me. Be careful. This place has been severely corroded by the Abyss. Paimon didn't realize it had gotten this bad. It's like a seething volcano ready to engulf our world at any moment. Boy! <laughs> 